ఓం శ్రీ సాయిరాం ఆర్టి వెల్కమ్ టు శ్రీ సత్య సాయి లోక్ శివ గురుకులం బింగ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఆర్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ స్పిరిట్స్ హ్యావ్ ఈటన్ నైస్లీ బట్ డోంట్ స్లీప్ ఓకే బీ యాక్టివ్ వీ ఆర్ స్టడింగ్ అబౌట్ ద కెమికల్ బాండింగ్ వీ హ్యావ్ సీన్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ క్లాస్ how bonding is important in daily life is it not as a bond between teacher and the students parents and the child and master and the pet dog and so on we saw and highest bond was between god and devotees in case of swami we call it as god and students that is the highest way of bonding in daily life coming to chemistry part chemical bonding is a bond between two elements and uh, this chemical bonding takes place in two ways one is ionic bonding or electrovalent bonding where there is a transfer of electrons between a metal and a non metal second one we are going to see today called as covalent bonding and uh, why do two atoms combine just to get stable arrangement just to become steady how it will happen either by losing electrons or by gaining electrons so when a river for example ganges it is formed in a a big lake called as manasarovara from there it starts it is a very thin stream it can be stopped easily by a thumb and when it comes to varanasi it passes through all uh, you know hillocks rocks and all it will be very fast in like uh, haridwar rishikesh etc when you come to varanasi it is very so wide na something like 2 to 3 kilometers wide so vast it becomes and the same ganges when it reaches the ocean all its uh, you no know, fast stream will be slow down is it not because it becomes stable even jivatma also doing all activities in a day and when a day will come when all its activities will come to a full stop so here atoms by losing electrons or gaining electrons become or gain eight electrons in the outermost in case of hydrogen it becomes two electrons so this uh, formation of eight electrons in the outermost orbit is called as octet rule oct means eight okay and this type of bonding by transfer of electrons is called as ionic bond because the metals when they lose electron become metallic ions the non metals when they gain electrons becomes you know non metallic ions and that's why the name ionic bonding the other name is covalent sorry other name is electrovalent bonding and here the atoms of elements after losing electrons they become cations and atoms of elements by gaining electron become anions okay for example sodium is a cation potassium is a cation magnesium is a cation and so on these are all called cations 
पैर रेटिंग प्लस प्लस बिकॉज इन दैट केस नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी लेस नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स विल बी मोर एंड वट आर एनायस फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्लोराइड अयॉन इज एनायन ऑक्साइड इज एनायन लाइक दैट विद गेनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आफ्टर गेनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वट एपन्स नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बिकम मोर दैन दी प्रोटॉन्स दैट्स वाई द नेम एनायस and when these two react they form what is called as electrovalent compound or ionic compound example is sodium chloride is a ionic compound there are two ions here na plus and cl minus and uh, in today's class we are going to see about that before that we'll see some Home assignments. I think some of you might have answered. First question: State octet rules. Every atom has a tendency to gain eight electrons in the outermost shell. To get stability, like noble gases. What happens to noble gases? They neither lose electrons nor gain. They become stable. When the river joins the sea, we will not be able to find out which is sea and which is river. Both will have the same taste of water, and both of them becomes, you know, stable. Okay. In chemistry also, it is called as octet rule. Okay. Why noble gases are non-reactive? Answer is because they have inert gas configuration, which makes it very stable. Means having eight electrons in the outermost orbit. And name the two types of ions present in sodium chloride. Two ions are Na plus sodium ion and Cl minus chloride ion. They are the two types of ion in sodium chloride. and next last question show the formation of sodium ion sodium oxide is ionic compound and here electronic configuration of sodium is 281 electronic configuration of oxygen is 2 and 6 so there are two atoms of nit sodium so two atoms of sodium 281 281 one atom of oxygen combined together form sodium oxide na2o na2 because two atoms of sodium one atom of oxygen so these two electrons are lost by sodium and it becomes 28 and these two lost by sodium is gained by oxygen so it becomes 28 okay so there is transfer of electrons resulting in the formation of ions and the bond is called ionic bond also called as electrovalent bond and the compound is called ionic compound and also called as electrovalent compound other name electrovalent both are same only but you must know both the names okay now in today's class we will see some properties of that last question in sodium chloride lattice how many chloride ions surround the each of sodium ions answer is sodium chloride lattice six chloride ions surround each of sodium ions there will be six surrounding it so that is answer for that we have seen in the previous class about lattice how the structure of sodium chloride okay now coming to today's topic so 
This is a very interesting thing. Before you come into the proper topic, one interesting thing you must note: sodium and chlorine. Sodium is a metal, very reactive metal. You have seen in the previous classes when what happens when a piece of sodium is put to cold water in a trough, it reacts vigorously with a hissing noise. Remember, and your teacher might have shown it. It should not touch in hand, and it is always kept in kerosene. Is not because it is poisonous. Very very reactive. Chlorine is a gas. Is a poisonous gas. So both are poisonous. But the compound of sodium and chlorine, namely sodium chloride, is a, we use it for all our dishes. Is non-poisonous. Sodium chloride salt is non-poisonous, and it is compulsory. Even for salt, sweet also they add a little of salt. So that is non-poisonous. They are very interesting item. And because sodium chloride is made up of sodium ions and chloride ions, which are non-poisonous. And what are these two? They are atoms. Atoms are poisonous. Elements are poisonous. Ions are non-poisonous. And a compound is formed by the ionic bond. So let us study some properties of ionic compounds. In Kannada language. There is a famous quotation: "Tai ginta bandhu villa, uppe ginta ruchi illa." Or in English, you can say, "There is no other relative closer than mother, and no taste better than salt." That is a quotation. We will see a small photograph of this. See, this is love of the mother. Can name the mother here? Yes, you are right. This is Sri Krishna, Lord Krishna, and Ashoda. The relation between Krishna and Ashoda was so intense, so pure in nature. And Krishna, for about fourteen years, gave a lot of joy, not only for Ashoda, for all the Gopa and Gopis of. Brindavan, and he gave a lot of peace also. And Ashoda was lucky enough to be a witness of it. And what is this? Now, of course, you may get some taste when you see all these things. I do not want to explain all this. He may know better than me. But here, the point is that all these dishes, salt is compulsory. Also, you are telling chemistry and showing the lunch here, lunch items. Just to make it interesting, I have shown it. That's all. That nothing to do with your ionic uh, compounds here. Just to make you interesting, and also you will uh, un understand what I am telling. That salt is compulsory for all the dishes. That is the point. And mother is the nearest and dearest. Whatever happens to her child, I know, mother will attend to it immediately. So that is all what we want to say in these figures. Is it nice? Okay. Now let us come to the point again. Now let us see properties of ionic compounds. Since the ionic compounds contain ions, namely cations and anions, which are held together by a strong electrostatic force of attraction. They show some general characteristic properties, which we look into today's topic. There is a force here. That force is called electrostatic force. In nature, we see so many type of forces. We say magnetic force. We say gravitational force. Like that, in the ionic compound, we find. A electrostatic force between what cations and anions. Okay, so this is what is called as lattice formation of 
sodium chloride physical state ionic compounds like sodium chloride sodium carbonate potassium chloride copper sulfate etc are crystalline solids where the ions are arranged in a regular fashion means what that is what is called as lattice formation and these ionic compounds are hard and they are brittle in nature means they are brick they are bound to break when it is for example salt if you make it to fall from a height it breaks is it not that is called brittle nature and uh, one more property is that they have high melting and boiling points why does it have it like that what do you mean melting point melting point means when a salt is solid is heated it gets converted into liquid the point at which the solid melts is called as melting point what is boiling point when a liquid when it is heated it gets starts boiling you know that is called as boiling point so ionic compounds have high melting point and boiling point because the strong electrostatic force of attraction will be there between the oppositely charged ions if we take sodium chloride for example melting point is 1074 kelvin or 801 degree celsius boiling point of sodium chloride is 1686 kelvin or 1413 degree celsius it means at this temperature sodium chloride melts into liquid at this temperature the liquid the sodium chloride starts boiling that is the meaning okay and hence lot of thermal energy or heat energy needed to overcome this strong force of attraction what is called as inter ionic attraction between the cations and anions in the ionic crystal okay that's why you must heat it for a long time and now one more property so this is how the transfer of ions takes place this is sodium gives out electrons this is chlorine absorbs electrons this is the force of attraction between the two electrostatic attraction between sodium cation and chloride ion okay and hence they form what is called as salt we call it as in the powder form it is called as table salt white drinker but don't confuse with sugar sugar is sweet in nature salt is sodium chloride is salt in nature okay and uh, the crystal has a three dimensional regular arrangement of cations and anions which is called crystal lattice just now i shown you in the previous slide sodium chloride for example it is a, you know it is a crystal here there are na plus means sodium ions cl minus chloride ions so on heating what happens breaking of this crystal lattice leads to molten state of the ionic compound so it start the ionic uh, you know force the force of attraction between the two ions become loose and then it starts melting and that is what is called as melting point so this is what is called as lattice formation and uh, here every sodium atom is surrounded by six chlorine atoms chlorine ions like that and now there is one interesting thing you must note that ionic compounds conduct electricity in the molten state or in aqueous solutions but not in solid state so only in the molten state means liquid state or when it dissolved in water it conducts electricity for that you have to do one small experiment since ions are free to move in the molten state 
they can carry current from one electrode to another electrode in a cell. The ions can conduct electricity in molten state. Doubt will arise. Why you must take molten state only or aqueous solution only? Reason is the ions will be free only in the molten state. In the solid state they are not free. They are bound to each other. Okay. Now you are sitting in a class. Let us example. So you are bound to by a teacher there. So when a teacher is there in the class, you are not supposed to go out. Only in the end of the class, bell will ring and you will go out. So the ions which are bound to each other will be free to move. And free will come only in the solution form or in the molten state. Let us do one activity for that. Here is a beaker containing sodium code solution. These are called electrodes, usually made up of copper. And this is what is called circuit. This is battery, 3 volts. And uh, this is a bulb and this is a switch. So this is sodium code solution you must take. And you have to pass current. What do you find? So prepare a solution of sodium code by dissolving one tablespoon of 100 ml water. So you must take 100 ml of water here. One tablespoon you have to add of salt. And then place the solution in a 200 ml beaker. This is a 200 ml beaker. And two graphite electrodes. It may be graphite or it may be copper electrodes. And connect the electrodes with a 3 volt battery. One dry cell means 1.5. 3 volt means 2 cells you can keep. Or you can take a eliminator also. And a bulb in a circuit. Initially take plain water. First you know to test it. Uh, take plain water. And test it. You will not get. Uh, bulb will not glow. You just add some salt to it. The bulb connected to NaCl solution glows brighter. It shows that ionic compounds conduct electricity in solution. So if you add salt to the water, bulb glows. What does it show? It shows that ionic compounds in solution conduct electricity. Then you may ask, is it only salt or anything else? Surely, you can take copper sulfate, you can take sulfuric acid, like that. But you must add it to water. Then only we see the bulb glowing. Bulb glowing means what? There is a flow of electricity. Ionic compounds cannot conduct electricity in a solid state. That is one thing you must note. So, the sodium ions, the pink color one sodium ions, the green color is chloride ions. Again, a lattice formation. In solid state, what happens? Such a movement of ions is not possible as they occupy fixed positions. And uh, hence, in a solid state, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. They do not conduct electricity. Okay. But only in solution form, in aqueous solution, what do you call aqueous means what? When water is added to the salt, then it, it is called as, so water is added, used as a solvent to dissolve ionic compounds. For example, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, magnesium chloride, all this. You can add water to it. Here water is a solvent. Salt is a solute. So when they dissolve, they form solution. We say salt solution. Is it not? Washing soda solution like that, copper sulfate solution. It weakens the electrostatic force of attraction present among the ions. When these forces are weakened, the ions become free to move. Hence, they conduct electricity. So when water is added, the ions become free. And when they are free to move, it conducts electricity. Okay? And uh, what about solubility? Ionic compounds are soluble in water. 
but are so insoluble in inorganic solvents like ether alcohol etc okay however a few ionic compounds are insoluble in water due to the strong electrostatic force between cation and anion for example barium sulfate silver chloride calcium fluoride etc they do not dissolve in water okay so this is the property one more property about solubility what about organic solvents about that we will study in the next class organic means solutions like that of ether alcohol petrol diesel etc etc they are called as benzene all this come in the organic okay so it, it they do not dissolve for example if i take salt and add it to benzene it won't dissolve or if we add it to the ether solution it won't dissolve the same salt if you put to water it dissolves okay so this is the water taken and this is what actually what happens this is sodium chloride and the positive ions namely sodium ions and chloride ions the sodium ions and chloride ions so when the water is added to this this breaks up into ions here this h red color represent hydrogen and white color represents chlorine okay this is how the ionic uh, you know solubility will come when uh, you know what when a salt is added to water they break up into sodium ions and chloride ions okay now let us see one game now let us match the following question is ability to dissolve in what in a solvent salt for example if it dissolves in water what do you call it process when ions become surrounded by water molecules name given to the regular arrangement of ions name given to the force of attraction between oppositely charged ions so these are the answers you have to match this can you do it okay come on let us see how to do it so ability to dissolve in water is called as solubility this uh, process of ions and ions become surrounded by water molecule is called hydration regular arrangement of ions is called lattice name given to force of attraction between oppositely charged ions is called electrostatic force now you must tell whether it is true or false come on tell one by one ionic compounds are insoluble in water is it true or false okay answer is false means what it is soluble second question ionic compounds conduct electricity in aqueous solution is it true or false yes it is true aqueous means what dissolving in water third one ionic compounds have low melting points just now you have seen the huh? answer is false ionic compounds are usually liquid in nature that is also false so like that you should be able to write answers for the given questions okay and uh, to conclude ionic bonding involves transfer of electrons from metals to non metals there is a transfer of electrons metals will give electrons non metals will take electrons so this type of giving and taking in life also you should have that giving and taking suppose you want to give something to swami says don't give any money to the beggars you cannot call it them as beggars you can call it them as you know financially weak persons you can call should not throw coins on them 
Swami says you can give food to them or you can give clothes to them or any other articles of daily use you can give. But don't give money because if you give money like that, they will misuse. They may get used for drinking or smoking or going to unwanted films and all. Okay, therefore, and what is symbol represents? This is giving, this is taking. The taking will be there only when giving is there. So here also metals like sodium, potassium, calcium, etc. give electrons. Non-metals like chlorine, oxygen, etc. take electrons. So giving and taking. Always you must have that habit of sharing with others. You have got that habit? Suppose your parents give you something, some heat wells, when you go to school, let us share it. That gives joy for both, is it not? So what our Sadhguru Sai says, Sadhguru Madhusun Sai says about giving and taking. He says, before you take from the creation, think about what you can give them in return. It is not a bunja or taking first and then tyaga, giving. First do tyaga and then take. So before taking anything, give first and then you take. Ask yourself what is that I can give back. Give first and then take. It is called give and take policy. Is it not? So you should know how to no, you must be high. hand must be like this only. Even Krishna during Mahabharata war, you might have heard it. When uh, Karna was not able to be defeated by Arjuna, Krishna go in the form of Brahmin and ask for Amrita Kalasha. Karna comes to know that it is Krishna only coming in that form of Brahmin. Immediately he was ready to give Amrita Kalasha. And uh, Karna Kundala, of course, Karna Kundala, when they about to give to Karna Kundala, then he says, don't give only Karna Kundala, give something, water, he says. There is no other water, he says. Then there is Amrita Kalasha in your heart, give that also. So a break open is, and he knew that it is Krishna only asking. So his hands were above, and Lord Krishna's hands were down. Is it not? That's why we call him as Dana, Veera, Shura, Karna. So if Amrita Kalasha and Karna Kundala was there, nobody could defeat him. Uh, when he lose this, this, both of these, Arjuna could win the war. Is it not? So always try to have a habit of giving first and then take. Is it not? So this is a lesson you can take from this chapter on ionic compounds. Now coming to home assignments. Why is NaCl or sodium chloride is bad conductor of electricity in solid state? How are covalent bonds formed? State low loss or gain of electrons giving their number in the following changes. N means nitrogen gives N3 minus. Cl gives Cl minus. Cu, Cu2 plus. You must tell is it gain electrons or loss of electrons? And then last question, why ionic compounds are able to conduct electricity in a aqueous solution? Okay, come prepared. Thank you.